Hare Krishna, and we're back with the easy journey to other planet by His Divine Grace, Srila A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, page number 75. Those who are satisfied with temporary happiness, temporary life, and temporary facilities are not intelligent according to Bhagavad Gita 7.23. Antavatu falam tesham tad bhavatyalpa medhasham Quote, One whose brain substance is very meager is interested in temporary things. Unquote. That is the version of Srimad Bhagavad Gita. I am eternal, so why should I be interested in non-permanent things? Who wants non-permanent existence? No one wants it. If we are living in an apartment and the landlord asks us to vacate, we are sorry, but we are not sorry if we move to a better apartment. This then is our inclination. We do not wish to die because we are eternal. The material atmosphere is robbing us of our eternality. Now oh, that's powerful robbing us of our eternality. Kruta is <laughs> Russian. That's cool. The Srimad Bhagavatam says, quote, Our duration of life is being diminished by the sun, beginning for, from its rising until the time it sets. Unquote. Daily, we are losing the duration of our lives. If the sun rises at 5.30 in the morning, at 5.30 in the evening, 12 hours have been taken away from the duration of our lives. We will never get this time back. If we ask the scientist, any scientist, I will give you 12 million dollars. Please give me back these 12 hours. He will reply, no, it is not possible. The scientist cannot do it. Therefore, the Bhagavatam says that from sunrise to sunset, the duration of our lives is being diminished. Time is called Kala, past, present and future. What is now present, tomorrow will be past. And uh, what is now future, tomorrow will be present. But this past, present and future are the past, present and future of the body. We do not belong to the category of the past present and future. We belong to the category of eternity. Therefore, one should be concerned with how to attain or how to be elevated to the platform of eternity. The developed consciousness of the human being should be utilized not in the animal propensities of eating, sleeping, mating and defending, but in searching out the valuable path which will help get that life of eternity. It is said that the sun is taking away our duration of life, every minute, every hour, every day. But if we engage ourselves in the topics of Uttama Shloka, the topics of the Lord, that time cannot be taken away. The time one devotes in a Krishna Consciousness Temple cannot be taken away. It's an asset, a plus, not a minus. The duration of life, so far as the body is concerned, may be taken. However, however one tries to keep it intact, no one can do it. But the spiritual education we receive in Krishna Consciousness cannot be taken away by the sun. It becomes a solid asset. Chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, is a very easy thing to do. Time spent chanting cannot be taken away like time pertaining to the body. Fifty years ago, I was a young man, but that time has been taken and cannot be returned. The spiritual knowledge I received from my spiritual master, however, cannot be taken away, but will go with me. Even after I quit this body, it will go with me. 
and if it is perfect in this life, then it will take me to the eternal abode. Both the material and spiritual worlds belong to Krishna. We are not proprietors of anything. It is all the pro property of the Supreme Lord, just as everything in the state belongs to the government, either in the prison house or outside the prison house. Conditioned life is just like life in a prison house in this material world. A prisoner cannot freely change from one cell to another. In free life one can go from one home to another home, but in prison life one cannot do that but must stay in his cell. All these planets are like cells. We're trying to go to the moon, but it is not practical by mechanical means. Whether we are American, Indian, Chinese or Russian, we have been given this planet to live on. We cannot leave. Although there are millions and billions of planets, and although we have machines by which we can, because we are conditioned by the laws of nature, God's laws. A man who is put into a certain cell cannot change at will without superior authority. Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita that one should not try to change from one cell to another. That will not make anyone happy. If a prisoner thinks, I am in the cell, let me request the warden to change my cell and I will be happy. That is a mistaken idea. One cannot be happy, so long as he is within the prison walls. We are trying to be happy by changing cells, from capitalism to communism. The aim should be to become free from this ism and that ism. One has to change completely from this ism of materialism. Then he can become happy. That is the program of Krishna Consciousness. We are taking advice from the Supreme Person. He says, My dear Arjuna, you may be elevated to the highest planetary system, which is called Brahma Loka, and is desirable because life there is very long. Unquote, that was a quote. We cannot calculate even a half day there. It is beyond our mathematical calculations, but even in Brahma Loka there is death. Therefore, Krishna says, Quote, do not waste your time trying to elevate yourself or transfer yourself from this planet to that planet." Unquote. The people I've seen in America are very restless. They go from one apartment to another apartment or from one country to another country. That restlessness is there because we are searching after our real home. Aww. To go from this place to that place will not give eternal life. Eternal life is with Krishna. Therefore, Krishna says, quote, Everything belongs to me, and I have the super excellent abode, which is called Galoka Vrindavan. Unquote. If one wants to go there, he must simply become Krishna conscious. Jai! And try to understand how Krishna appears and disappears, what his constitutional position is, what our constitutional position is, what is our relationship with him, and how to live. Simply try to understand these ideas scientifically. Everything in Krishna consciousness is scientific. It is not bogus, whimsical, sentimental, fanatical or imaginary. It is truth, fact, reality. One must understand Krishna in truth. Jai. We have to give up this body, willingly or unwillingly. The day will come and when we will have to submit to the laws of nature and give up this body. Even President Kennedy, in his procession, had to submit to nature's law and change his body for another body. He could not say, oh, I am the president, I am Mr. Kennedy, I cannot do that. He was forced to do it. That is the way nature works. Mm -hmm. The purpose of our... That was not my exclamation, it was written. <laughs> that was That is the way nature works. The purpose of our developed human consciousness is to understand how nature works. Aside from human consciousness, 
There is consciousness in dogs, cats, worms, trees, birds, beasts and all other species. But we are not meant to live in that consciousness. The Srimad Bhagavatam says that after many many births we have attained the human form of body. Now we should not misuse it. Please utilize this human life to develop Krishna consciousness and be happy. Jai, thus ends this beautiful, beautiful, amazing book by His Divine Grace called Easy Journey to Other Planets. Wow.